This is 7 Morning News with Anne Sanders. Good morning. A Qantas A380 flying from Dubai to Sydney has made an emergency landing in Perth. The plane descended 30,000 feet as a precaution after an air conditioning failure. Andrea Burns is at Perth International Airport. And Qantas is currently making alternate arrangements for all of the passengers on QF Flight 2 from Dubai to Sydney, which was forced to put down here in WA at about 1 o'clock this morning. Around 300 k's off our coast, the plane dipped 9,000 feet. Uh, passengers were woken by the abruptness of the, uh, of the drop. But they were generally very happy with the Qantas treatment, with the way that it all has been handled. I spoke to some of the passengers earlier this morning and this is what they had to say. It just started wobbling a bit, shaking, and uh, we looked at each other when the, the pilot announced across to the, uh, the crew to take their seats. Emergency situation. Uh, I just looked at her and thought, well, what's, what's all this? This could be it. We were above the Pacific Ocean and the announcement came from the captain to the crew that he was doing an emergency descent and the nose went down. We had some turbulence. I thought he was escaping the turbulence. And for some, an unexpected trip to Perth, but uh, everyone's safe. Thanks, Andrea. A team of marine experts is rushing to a remote beach west of Adelaide after a group of sperm whales beached themselves. They were discovered just south of Ardrossan and were reported to authorities this morning. Eight whales washed up, two appeared to have made it back out to sea. It's believed six of the animals have died. The Prime Minister is playing down a crushing end-of-year poll that shows Bill Shorten is outperforming him as the nation's preferred leader. Live to Maria Yovanovitch in Canberra. Good morning, Maria. Tony Abbott is putting it down to just a rough patch. Yes, Anne, he says his government's not the first to go through this sort of thing and that it won't be the last. Uh, the latest poll shows that the opposition leader has leapt ahead of the Prime Minister a staggering eight points. Tony Abbott has tried to defend the numbers on morning television, but he did struggle to remember the name of Sunrise presenter David Koch during the interview. Well, Chris, uh, we wouldn't no, be the... So, so, sorry, sorry, David. You don't apologise for misleading the public and the voters on all the promises you've broken? Well, Chris, uh, Koshi, I, 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 don't, I do not accept uh, the uh, accusations that you're making. It's been a messy end to the year for the coalition and the Prime Minister's copying much of the criticism for breaking some of his pre-election promises. We're now told even his signature paid parental leave scheme will be changed with any savings to go into making childcare more affordable. We do want to see it better targeted. What we want to do is uh, deliver not only a, a good paid parental leave scheme that's based on a woman's wage, but we also want to deliver improved childcare as well. And so far, the Prime Minister's not really giving any detail into it, but he says that he'll talk it over with his Cabinet colleagues over the Christmas break. Thanks very much, Maria. The SES says it's hitting jobs hard today as it tries to repair storm-damaged homes in Sydney before the next round of wild weather begins this afternoon. Northern and western suburbs were hardest hit when strong winds uprooted trees and brought down power lines last night. A lightning strike blasted this home at Winston Hills, sparking a fire in the kitchen and roof. At Bly Park, a man was taken to hospital after a falling tree collapsed on an awning on top of him. We've out of area teams coming from the country, coming in to assist, as well as those teams from Sydney who will be focusing on those significantly impacted areas of Karingai, Camden, Hornsby um, and Bly Park. Storms have battered Sydney for eight days in a row. Seven News meteorologist David Brown joins us now. David, good morning. It's been a rough old week for Sydney and there are more storms on the way. Yes, indeed, and, and good morning. In fact, uh, the city has already exceeded its monthly average for the number of December thunderstorm days. And yes, I think we'll see a few more storms this afternoon. A reprieve tomorrow before the stormy weather returns midweek. Right now on radar, as we take a close look, this is the trough we're expecting to push through and spark a few showers and thunderstorms in the Sydney area a little later this afternoon. Our forecast model is again predicting extensive areas of rain through Queensland and New South Wales over the next few days uh, with some big 
big falls likely through Queensland and northern parts of New South Wales. A good soaking indeed, in fact, for those parched areas of Queensland. As we can see, the totals pop huge areas in excess of 100 millimetres, pockets 200 millimetres plus. Plenty of rain through northern parts of New South Wales as well, but unfortunately, Western Victoria and most of South Australia is likely to miss out. And of course, Anne, I'll have the full national weather a little later. Thanks, Brownie. See you again soon. Three people are being killed and one million have fled their homes as Typhoon Hagopit slowly tracks across the Philippines. 210 kilometre an hour winds caused major damage along the country's east coast. The power supply was the first casualty. And here inside the gym that has been the biggest shelter in the town of Legazpi, the darkness added to the sense of being under siege. But while it's been threatening and uncomfortable, they have been safe. Like all the communities in the path of Typhoon Hagupit, this has been largely a ghost town because it's haunted by the deaths of 7,000 people in Typhoon Haiyan just over a year ago. In the eastern provinces of the Philippines, it's estimated that up to a million people heeded the warnings and fled in what the UN is calling one of the biggest peacetime evacuations ever seen. While hundreds of thousands of people here have been able to save themselves, many will have been unable to save their homes. Most of the residents of this region live in likely built houses right on the coast. Bamboo and corrugated iron will be no match for this. This typhoon has been moving painfully slowly, resulting in phenomenal rainfall. It hasn't been as bad as it might have been, but in a typhoon-prone place like this, there's always a next time. The Duke and Duchess of Cambridge have arrived in New York City for the start of a three-day visit to America's East Coast. Mike Haymore is outside their hotel. Hello, Mike. How are William and Kate? Welcome to the Big Apple. Well, and despite it being very cold here, about zero degrees or below, a large number of Americans were here to get their glimpse of royalty. Uh, Kate and William arrived here at the Carlisle Hotel. Uh, Kate, for the record, was wearing a purple coat, I'm told, from the Seraphine maternity line. Yes, her baby bump was showing. They're only inside for about 45 minutes, a quick change, and they're now at their first official function, a private dinner with about 15 other couples. The palace, by the way, has denied reports that it cost $50,000 a seat to be at that table. Despite the fact the Americans kicked the Brits out of here centuries ago, they're certainly welcoming them back now. I grew up loving Princess Diana and watched her wedding when I was a little girl, and I made her watch Prince William and Kate Middleton's wedding when she was younger. And of course, this is the hotel where Princess Diana stayed when she came to America. So to me, it's very historical. We have a great love in our family for the royals, and uh, maybe we could class it up a little bit in America too, like them. Kate Middleton is our idol. We, we have grown up. Um, you know, following them and following what they do, and we just love them. We think they're they're just such elegant people. Now, despite the fact that they don't, they don't have Prince George with them, there's not going to be a sleep in tomorrow. William heads to Washington DC, a meeting with Barack Obama at the White House. Kate will go to Harlem to meet underprivileged children. They'll meet up again at a basketball game tomorrow night where reportedly they'll sit courtside with Beyonce and Jay-Z. So it's going to be an action-packed 72-hour trip here to New York. And Mike Hamill reporting from New York. Stay warm, Mike. Thank you. Let's check the weather forecast. Hello again, Brownie. How's it looking? Yeah, good morning, Anne. Looks like more stormy weather is on the way for most of the eastern seaboard today. In fact, severe thunderstorms are likely over the southeast corner of Queensland this afternoon. Right now on Sydney's radar, we can track some thunderstorms which have been coming off the Blue Mountains. They've, they've moderated. In fact, they're only moderate thunderstorms currently over the outer western suburbs. I think we'll see the odd heavy, heavy shower, maybe the odd crack of thunder in the city centre.
centre within the hour. Let's check out our weather wall. In fact, we'll head off to Brisbane first of all. Oh, weather wall's broken this morning. Well, that's unfortunate, isn't it? Well, let's have a look at the forecast for the major centres around the nation tomorrow. We're expecting our sunshine conditions today, I should say, in Perth should reach around 28 degrees. One or two further showers in Hobart around 18 degrees. Of course, storms building in Brisbane this afternoon. Some heavy falls likely after 4 o'clock should reach around 31 degrees. Melbourne, fine this afternoon. The drizzle has finally cleared, heading for high of around 21 degrees. Tomorrow, you'll notice this trough pushing that stormy weather north. Gradually clearing out of New South Wales, looking quite pleasant over the southeast corner tomorrow. In fact, Melbourne, fine, mild at 22 degrees. Sydney, maybe a shower or two, around 25. More storms on the way for Brisbane tomorrow. Heavy falls and around 30 degrees. That's latest weather. More details at 4 and Have a good one. Thanks, Brownie. And that's 7 News to Now. We'll keep you up to date throughout the day. I'm Ann Sanders. Thanks for your company. See you tomorrow.